this trail out to Iditarod is uh, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, it always is. But I'll be honest with you, this is a section of trail that I'm not as comfortable about as many of the other pieces of trail. I do think that this race is going to happen on a little bit faster pace than what we've seen before. Mostly because the Iditarod is gonna be a little bit shorter this year. So that makes a few key differences. One, we're gonna see mushers pushing the pace a little bit harder, definitely in the early part, but also in the mid part of this race. So I think day four is gonna find us taking off from our 24 hour break. We probably will be on our 24 for a good portion of, of the fourth day of the race. And when we leave our mandatory 24, whether that's in McGrath or Ofer, it may be different if a musher goes all the way to Iditarod because they're essentially a day later before they take their 24. But when we leave this checkpoint as a musher, what I'm thinking is I want to ease the dogs back into running now that they've had this nice long rest. I don't want to go out and do some monster run right off the 24 and completely undo all the benefit I just gained for this dog team during that long rest. So for me, I think the best way to do this is you take off out of your 24 with a team that's fully charged up and rested, go maybe 40 miles down the trail, stop and take a short break, get another big meal into them, Feeding them a good amount at this point is not a bad thing. It might slow them down a little bit, and that's probably a good thing. And what I'm thinking is try to get these dogs back into that casual, long-distance race mentality where they're cruising down the trail, not flying down the trail. I just want them shuffling along, comfortable, easy. We need a 1,000-mile pace here. So I think day four will probably end with mushers having gone into the Ofer checkpoint, if they had taken their 24 McGrath, which I do think is gonna be the most common, and I certainly don't know exactly what I'm doing at this point as of taking the, you know, filming this video, even though it's just a few days till the race starts. Let's say they 24 McGrath. Many teams will go to Iditarod in two runs. They'll go past Ofer, they'll pick up some food and supplies in Ofer, some straw for the dogs to sleep on, and go another maybe 15 miles down the trail, stop and give the dogs a rest, this positions them nicely to go all the way to Iditarod and stop there. You're also gonna see teams breaking up this section of trail in all different ways because there's a few new things out there and we'll cover this in tomorrow's video. You're gonna see a few teams go straight to Ofer, stop and take a short break in Ofer, and if they can load their sled with the supplies they're gonna to need to camp out on the trail while the dogs are sleeping, that is more efficient. Even if it only takes you 10 minutes to go through a checkpoint, you know, pull in, you gotta dump out your bag, you take the snacks you need for the dogs, the food you need to make their big meal, pack the straw into your sled, remember to grab fuel for cooking for the dogs, and your personal food out of those bags. You can do that in a few minutes, sure. If it's 10 minutes, it's a little bit of wasted time. Whereas if you decide to stop and camp there, you can pull in, put straw down for the dogs, feed them a meal, and now once they're sleeping, you can, in a little more calm manner, pack your sled for the next run, think about what you need to take, and it's not really wasted time because the dogs are sleeping. Now, once you take off from Ofer, this trail out to Iditarod is uh, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, it always is. It can be a rough section of trail. I've seen it be really nice. I've also seen it be uh, you know, nearly 100 miles of tussocks and bumps and just rough stuff out there. But I'll be honest with you, this is a section of trail that I'm not as comfortable about as many of the other pieces of trail, and here's why. When I started racing the Iditarod, I ran my first Iditarod in 2005. An odd number, which means it's a southern route, which means we go from Ofer to Iditarod on the southern route rather than from Ofer up to Cripple on the northern route. All right, so my first Iditarod, southern route, awesome. My second Iditarod was in 2007. Again, an odd numbered year that we went on the southern route out to Iditarod. My third Iditarod, the first time that I had my own kennel, was 2009. Again, odd numbered year, going to the southern route. So you'd think with my first three Iditarods being on the southern route, I'd be good at it, right? <laughs> Actually, I guess there was four out of my first five Iditarods were on the southern route. But my last time that I have personally run from Ofer to the checkpoint of Iditarod was 2013. 2015 would have been the next opportunity to do that. Uh, that year we went up to Fairbanks and used the alternate route. 2017, again, we went to Fairbanks and used an alternate route. More recently, the Iditarod has gone on the southern route a few times, but I didn't run those races. The last time that I've run from Ofer to Iditarod was 2013, a long time ago. So I don't remember that section of the trail step by step, even though four of my first five Iditarods were on the southern route. Either way, I suspect that the end of day four will find many of the top teams between having just gone through Ofer or about to leave Ofer and on their way towards Iditarod, many of those teams planning to camp 
before they reach Iditarod. So this is going to be a hard section of the race to follow because you're going to have a lot of teams camping out on the trail. They're going to be breaking up these runs in unique ways because it is a long haul from Ofer to Iditarod. It's about 76, 77 miles out to Iditarod. So teams will break it up differently. But that's where we're going to end day four is somewhere just past Ofer with this long stretch of historic trail laying out in front of us on the way to Iditarod.